Hello everyone, and welcome to another Max 8 tutorial. This is number 29, Effects in Jitter. So, I guess to have some effects we're going to have to get ready and have some movies first, so or at least one. So let's uh, go ahead and pull a movie up um, by clicking on the little movie icon in the left uh, frame the toolbar frame, I suppose, and um, what shall we watch today? More chickens? No, how about blading? Haven't seen that yet, so let's go ahead and we'll put blading up here at the top. That is a playlist, sort of play file thing, and so the movie will just come out here. We're going to uh, tell it to loop when it does come out there, and then um, we'll need a viewer, so go ahead, type the letter J, and you get immediately a JIT dot, and then we're going to type P, window. Okay, so <clears throat> as we have done a number of times, I'm going to put one P window up here, just so we can see, um, holding the shift key down to keep it in scale, so we can see what's actually coming out of the movie, and then we'll put another, you can duplicate it and bring it down here, another window down here, again holding the shift key to make sure it's scaled correctly, so that once we add an effect in here, um, we'll be able to see what it looks like. So um, let's, well, let's lock our patch and just see, we're going to turn the movie on there's somebody blading there, and we're going to put it on loop, so it just keeps on going and going and going all the time. And then we'll be able to see the difference between this and our movie at the bottom. So let's come on over here and uh, go up to the, whoops, got to unlock our patcher, of course, and go over to Objects. And under Objects, you can select a Jitter object, and then... Um, of course you would have to know which ones are effects, and you can search for that, but uh, we'll do that in a slightly more advanced version of the effects tutorials. But let's come down to uh, jit.bercosa, B-R-C-O-S-A, and just drag that out here, and we'll just put it here, and now we connect the uh, movie player to the Burkosa and the Burkosa to the P window. And there we have it right there playing. Now we could, and I often do, encourage people to go steal everything they need to know from the help file. But in this particular case, I want to stress how you can find out what sorts of things you can send to the to any object. But since we have the JIT Burkosa effect, let's click on it, and then we'll just uh, move our window over here as close as we can, and we'll look at in the references here. So when you get the references open, you can see all the messages that you can send to them. One of them is contrast, one is the dimensions, um, out, the input or output name of a matrix, that'll come up later um, in, a, in a more advanced uh, tutorial. So you have the saturation and also the type of matrix. But you'll notice that there is a saturation, there is a contrast, and there is brightness, B-R-C-O-S-A, Burkosa. So these are the things that this particular um, effect can control. So we can um, put over here our friend prepend, and then we can copy those names, and we can say brightness. And 
we can make another um, prepend. Sometimes I'm just really lazy. And we can make another one for contrast. Now, again, I'm not just typing these randomly. I'm, it's because the Burkosa has brightness, contrast, and also saturation. It's a good thing to check how they spell those. Sometimes they sort of come up with a creative spelling, and you have to notice it. OK, so saturation. So anything that comes through here, and in our case that'll be a number, will get prepended by these terms, and then that'll tell the Burkosa what to do. So I'm going to just connect these up to here, shift clicking to the outlet, letting off the shift for this one. And we can also more than likely find out what the value range is here by unlocking our patcher and shifting and, and clicking on it. And then if you come down here to the bottom, it says brightness. Default equals 1, that's fully bright. So values below 1 to 0 reduce brightness, while values above 1 increase it. Um, 1 represents no change. So if we wanted to adjust brightness, we would probably want to be able to go a little brighter than bright all the way down to 0. And we could maybe even try a negative number out. So um, let's go ahead, and since the values are between um, 0 and 1, we should also note that they are decimal values, or floats as we call them. So I'm just going to type the letter F here, and I'm going to put connect this on here and lock my patcher. Now we haven't moved this number yet, so it hasn't put out any any number. So as soon as we move it, it's going to uh, change drastically. But let's start trying to move it up a little bit. So at 0 0.01, we see the screen goes pretty dark, and then we go up. So there's about half brightness up to 1. And now we're over 1, and we're up to almost 2. And somewhere around 4, it just well, you can still uh, to about five. It's not really all that useful anymore. So, and then let's just see what happens if we go all the way down to zero, and then try a negative number. Absolutely nothing. So we know it has to be a positive number and probably between 1 and 5. So we can actually make a slider, unlocking our patcher here. We can type an N, type slider, and put a little slider there. can even connect it, but what we really want to do is go over to the inspector and say float output. This is super important, very important. Float output, otherwise it will only put out integers and it won't be a smooth transition. And then we're going to say what is the range? And the range is 5.0. So the minimum is going to be 0 and the upper limit is going to be 5. Okay, now let's just make sure that that's actually working. So we'll just say there's 0, there's 1, that looks normal, and then we can really just blow it out by going up to about 5. But we probably want to go to about 1. So um, yes. So for contrast, well, being lazy, we can also just copy these, duplicate them, on a Mac, that means holding the Option key down while you drag it, and put this on Contrast. I'm going to leave this one at 1 so we can see what Contrast does here. Um, 
Instead of using the slide, I'm going to use the number because I'm curious about negative numbers. So um, at zero, there's really no contrast. Everything is gray. And if you go negative, hey, look at that. You get a negative image. You've turned the you've turned the image inside out. So this um, this particular parameter, you may find that you want to be able to take it down to like negative four up to. Well, it could even. I don't know. It gets pretty interesting. How high can you go? It doesn't seem to do anything after about 10. So I'm going to say in this case, it seems like you could go from about negative 10 to positive 10. And so I'm going to go ahead and click this and say, um, what is our range? Negative 10 to positive 10 is uh, 20. Point zero. Don't forget, um, the float output is already checked because we duplicated this one, but um, it's worth noting that this has to be checked. So if for some reason yours isn't checked, please check it. Float output super important with this kind of thing. And the minimum, we're going to change it, the output minimum, to negative 10. Negative 10.0, just to make sure that we always get a float. So now we should be able to whoops, to lock our patcher and then go. So there's going to be our normal is one. And then we can go very high contrast and very low contrast. Exciting. All right, so let's uh, put it back at one, which we, or you can, Hard to get it exact. Let's say it's close enough. Okay, and saturation. Let's just copy this one and move it over again. Select them both, put the option key down on a Mac, and let it go there. Connect it, and again, I'm just gonna try stuff out with the numbers, the number box here, and try going up a little bit so this desaturated all the colors. It's just a black and white now. Um, and then if we go up to one, of course, it gets fully uh, the colors full color. And now if we go up to uh, seven, <laughs> it's looking kind of colorful. And now the question, if we go into the negative world, what happens? And lo and behold, it reverses the colors. The kid's now wearing a yellow shirt. And in the positive world, let's see what he's wearing, a sort of bluish purple shirt. So, and uh, let's see if we can spot anything else that he's wearing that has a specific color. Black helmet. The black helmet's still a black helmet when it's, uh, or is it? Yeah, it is. So um, this seems to make the complementary colors stand out in the video. But uh, it seems like these are also useful ranges for the, the slider to be able to go from negative 10 up to positive 10, and then um, back to one if you're able to do that. So there you go. So that's really it. Whenever you're looking at um, an effect, go see what the um, what the possible, sorry, I'm not uh, highlighting the thing. Highlight the effect and see what sorts of um, what sorts of messages you can send to it. You can also go and check the help file. It's true, but uh, this is one way of doing it and, find, and discovering what's behind all those effects. Um, that's it. We're going to keep it short today. Thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next video.